Hi and welcome back to another video and today will be another journey into AliExpress cooling solutions for NVMe SSDs. We have an update because previously we were using a Gen 4 NVMe SSD while today we are going to use this crucial T700 which I bought. It's the first Gen 5 SSD which I ever used and this also has slightly higher power consumption than the previous Gen 4 SSD. From what I know it's peak about 12 watts so that should be even more challenging. In total we bought about 20 or 25 M2 SSD coolers. We already featured some of them in two previous videos and today we will have the remaining highlights. This video is powered by Hetzner and the Hetzner server auction. If you need an affordable and at the same time swiftly available server this is the right place for you to check. Using the filters on the left you can easily select the server according to your needs. For example with location in Falkenstein, Germany, AMD CPU and for example minimum 32GB of memory. This example shows a Ryzen 7 1700X server for only 35 euro per month and there is no setup fee. The traffic as usual is unlimited and the server auction once again shows Hetzner's focus on a responsible business with focus on resources to use the hardware as long as possible. Find out more in the link below. We are starting with the so-called natural cooling disc. I'm not quite sure what's so natural about this cooler. Seems to be made fully out of aluminium, two pieces mainly, a small connector on the side, which should be for the cable connection for the fan. The fan, I'm not sure how much this will actually help because it looks extremely small. So we will see if this helps or if this maybe doesn't do anything. Before we start to add the cooler, first of all, there is the SSD sitting without any heatsink. And let's take a look in Windows. And what you can see here is that without any cooling, I mean, I've been sitting in Windows idle for maybe one or two minutes. I didn't do anything, no load, nothing. And it's already at 66 degrees Celsius. And that's what you get in return. So after it heated up too much and exceeded the junction temperature, then the system just shuts down, reboots, but the SSD is still hot and it will not be detected anymore. And you have to shut down and wait a little bit. And that's why even that crucial sells this without heatsink. They have a version with and without heatsink. Without heatsink is absolutely not recommended. That's why we'll put it in here and hope that Makita will stop screaming in the background. And the first thing that's annoying about this cooler is that the thermal paste is just too big, exceeds the surface on the bottom. That's why I first have to cut it to shape. Otherwise, I just cannot plug it in here. Already with this one on this board, we have compatibility issues. So. If you try to plug it in here, you can see it will collide with this clip down there. Whereas you also cannot use this slot because it's going to collide with the graphics card, even though this is already, already a fairly small model. But yeah, I will try to remove the clip on the bottom. Clip is gone and theoretically you could also put it back because it's just like clipped on from the back. Just be easy with the screwdriver and you can remove it if you need to. After spending exactly 10 minutes in Windows idle, we now have 58 degrees Celsius, which is certainly lower. And we will now switch on the fan and see what happens, if it even helps. Cable already attached, now simply plugging to one of the fan headers. Wait, this has a temperature on the SSD? I didn't even know that. That is, that is actually quite cool. Well, maybe not literally, because you can see it's 61 degrees Celsius, now 62. I'm not even sure why it's reading higher than what Crystal Disk Info is reading. It's like two or three degrees Celsius higher. But still, that's actually, that's surprisingly cool. I like it. Well, I mean, the fact that you can see it, that, that's still kind of cool. Let's see if the fan helps or not. 10 minutes later, and to our surprise, it actually got worse by one or two degrees Celsius. On the cooler, it reads 62 degrees Celsius still. So it's still kind of the same temperature range. So let's just fire up the benchmark. I'm running Crystal Disk Mark and at the same time also Hardware Info to keep track of the temperature, which is already above 70 degrees Celsius. So it's definitely getting into the danger zone. Read rate still 12,400 megabyte per second, which is like insane performance. And the reason why I keep Hardware Info open, not only for temperature, but also to keep check on the read and write rates, because if this drops significantly, we know that the device would be throttling. 
Now that the drive hit 80 degrees Celsius, it starts to throttle, as you can see. It was previously hitting 11,800 megabyte per second, which is as expected. And now that the drive once hit 80 degrees Celsius, it started to throttle down to half the performance, about 6,000 megabyte per second. And now repeating the benchmark, which it's not even taking like one minute, you can see even the read rate now dropped to about half the performance. So yeah, again, hitting above 80 degrees Celsius. The cooler reads 70 degrees Celsius, which is certainly hot. The good thing about this is that even though this is still throttling, it's not cooling well enough, but because of the higher mass compared to like not running a cooler at all, which we did previously, it's still fine to throttle down because without any heatsink, it would just shut down because it cannot keep up with the heat. With this, it can throttle down to a certain degree and still run, but you lose like half of the performance. Let's continue with a cooler that could actually perform quite well. I'm just asking myself, who in their right mind is advertising temperatures in percent? That doesn't make any kind of sense, like, like just no. Quite a significant amount of mass surface area. We have a bigger fan than the previous cooler and also two heat pipes on the side. So that actually looks quite promising. I'm going to plug this cooler with the SSD and then wait in idle to see what kind of temperatures we have after 10 minutes. And after the 10 minutes in idle, we see about 47 degrees Celsius without the fan running. That's why I'm just going to plug the fan and we will wait another 10 minutes. And one thing I can straight highlight is that I cannot hear the fan at all. I can see it spinning, but it's extremely quiet. In this case, at least the fan is helping a little bit. We are now between 46 and 47, so it's helping like maybe one or two degrees Celsius, but at least it didn't get warmer. After about two minutes of load, we still maintain the speed of about 12,000 megabyte per second, but we are getting close to the 80 degrees Celsius mark, already at 75 right now. Not even five minutes of load were possible, we already hit the 81 degrees Celsius mark, which led to a throttling of the drive to again about 5000 to 6000 megabyte per second. So yeah, not even five minutes possible. Now that the Grau Gear cooler also failed, I honestly don't have hope in this one. But I mean, who came up with this design? I'm not sure. It seems to be kind of interesting. Maybe just two fans are better than one. That could be one argument you could have. It's just overall interesting. Comes with a SATA power plug for those two tiny fans. And obviously the mounting is special again, AliExpress style, just two rubber bands. My estimate is, I mean, that's for sure made to fail. After 10 minutes in idle, we see 63 degrees Celsius, which is almost the same as without any heatsink. Oh, that's great. You can see I plugged power. Nothing is spinning. Perfect. Maybe I have to inspect this connector. Not sure if they just glued together something wrong. Inside I found this normal three pin fan connector. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, it was moving for like a split second. Maybe that's the simple cause of issue. I just noticed that this one pin is not fully plugged. Hmm. I'm still struggling to get the fan to run. Meanwhile, the SSD is not chilling at 67 degrees Celsius. I'm simply at this point just cutting open whatever they are doing here. I need somebody to explain what the hell they were doing. You can see that three wires exit the fan just as a normal fan. So you have the 12 volt or like the supply voltage. Then you have your RPM signal and you have ground. They just connected 12 volt to, to the fan speed signal. Why the hell? I removed the signal cable and just put the 12 volt and whatever ground back in. So let's see. That was a successful product. Great work to whoever assembled that. And of course, there are not even markings on the fence. We cannot even figure out what kind of usual supply voltage they were rated for. So that was just a product for the bin. But besides things like this, there also has to be one cooler which actually performs well. And that's why we will check out this one, which on the packaging only says Dolder Aluminium Kü Kühler mit Lüfter, which means it's an aluminium cooler with fan. And that's all the information we have. 
But this one comes with a pretty big sized fan. Not sure about the surface area though, but at least airflow wise that should be significantly better than the previous solutions. I mean visually that's also something you really want to have inside your system. Maybe if it's the top slot not as bad, but yeah. In idle after 10 minutes 45 degrees Celsius, that's not even too bad. So now only the fan has to work on that one. It's actually quite quiet, it's not too bad. At least it didn't heat up during idle with the fan spinning. We have a starting temperature of 44 degrees Celsius. So let's just start the benchmark, see what kind of temperature we can expect after maybe 5 to 10 minutes. It took almost 10 minutes to get into the danger region, which we are about to hit right now. So you can see we are approaching 80 degrees Celsius. I think if it now switches from sequential read to sequential write, it will probably hit the 80 degrees Celsius mark, which will then result in throttling of the drive once again. But compared to all the other coolers, this performed much, much better. One question that remains for me is how will this PCIe Gen 5 SSD perform if it's mounted on the board directly? Because I think the majority of the users will just go for this solution. That's why I first of all peeled off the protective film of this thermal pad. That's only necessary if you use a double-sided occupied uh, SSD. So if it's smaller capacity, cheaper SSDs, a lot of them, they don't have components on the back side, so they often just don't even touch this surface. In that case, you don't have to peel it off because it Long term is better if you don't peel it off because then there will be no dust if you ever want to use it. So if you use it like that, that's fine and now we will put on the cooler. I think this is more realistic in the end because the majority of people will just use the SSD in one of the mainboard slots, might be the top one or one of the bottom ones. Theoretically, you could place three of the Gen 5 SSDs in there, which I'm quite sure about will be overkill, especially temperature wise. So we will just use the single one I have and see how it turns out. Windows idle again, after 10 minutes roughly, we have about 48 degrees Celsius in the mainboard. So again, we are checking with a single SSD just mounted in the mainboard, how many times we can run the sequential read and write load and see if this will also result in throttling. 10 minutes, a sequential read and write constantly and we are still not that far away, but we are still away from 80 degrees Celsius, so should still be the safe zone. Sheik joined us again for the outro. Yeah, I mean, overall, I have to say I'm, as usual, quite disappointed, especially by the Grau Gear cooler, which first look seems to be quite okay, because it has, just visually, a certain amount of surface area. It comes with two heat pipes and also a fan, which I thought should do quite good, but it actually didn't. It performed worse than the mainboard included solution, so didn't seem worth buying this. I was kind of surprised about the natural cooling disc, not about the cooling disc part because I mean the fan didn't really help anything. Generally this is not sufficient to cool a Gen 5 NVMe SSD. But at least it had a built-in temperature monitor which I find kind of cool. Was pretty cool looking so that could be something that's adding something to your system. At least that. This one was not too bad even though it's pretty tall. But it was at least quiet so we got that. And I think overall it should be fine to mount these devices just in the mainboard cooler because we saw that it performed better than all the other solutions simply because you have a lot of mass and at the same time also a good amount of um, like surface area for dissipating the heat and as long as you only run one of these drives in there and don't have constant load then it should be fine. Overall still I mean Gen 5 NVMe drives they are extremely fast but you have to ask yourself the question if it's worth getting one of these or not because Probably in daily use, especially for gaming, you will not be able to tell a difference. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.